Welcome back to JP's Retro World. We're back in our wrestling state of mind. That's right, because last time I covered SummerSlam 1988. So I thought I would follow it up with, imagine that, SummerSlam 1989, The Heat Returns. As SummerSlam returns to pay-per-view, but this time they were in the Meadowlands Arena in Rutherford, New Jersey. And this was in late August, just like in 1988. But things were... 1989 was a pretty good year in the WWF. Actually, it was a pretty good year in wrestling in general. Because a lot of cool stuff was happening. A lot of cool things. A lot of cool matches. And SummerSlam was no exception. So, here's the card. So, Dino Bravo was victorious over Coco Beware, the Birdman. And then the Brain Busters, Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard, uh, were victorious over the Heart Foundation. Now, the Brain Busters, they came over from the NWA, or WCW, whatever you want to call it. But the rumor is that after a pay-per-view in the NWA, uh, the Brain Busters, who were then just known as the one half of the Four Horsemen, or two of the Four Horsemen, they learned that their manager, J.J. Dillon, was making a lot more money than them. So they didn't care for that. So that's when they kind of secretly started talking to Vince, and Vince McMahon brought him in as the Brain Busters, and he put him with Bobby Heenan, and they had a good run. They won the tag titles from Demolition, and then I think Demolition eventually won the tag titles back. But, you know, they had about a year run with WWF, until Tully Blanchard left first, and then right after the Arn Anderson left. So, anyway, but yeah, Brain Buster's victorious in this one, tag match. And then we had Dusty Rhodes versus the Honky Donk Man, in which Dusty Rhodes won. But at this time, Dusty Rhodes was kind of feuding with the Honky Tonk Man. I remember they did this thing on primetime wrestling, where Dusty Rhodes and... Honky Tonk Man had a sing-off where Honky Tonk Man told Dusty Rhodes, Man, I'm the greatest singer, I'm the greatest entertainer in the World Wrestling Federation. Nobody can a better entertainer than me. And Dusty Rhodes said, Well, I think I can do better than you singing-wise. So they both had kind of the singing contest. Neither one of them could sing. But nevertheless, that kind of fueled a feud between the two and it culminated at SummerSlam 89. It was Dusty Rhodes. I believe he probably delivered the atomic elbow. Beat the Honky Tonk Man. He's cool. He's cocky. He's bad. But not bad enough to beat Dusty Rhodes. The American Dream. Okay, so. And then we had kind of a, another grudge match. We had Mr. Perfect versus the Red Rooster. Mr. Perfect, of course, won that match. And the interesting thing is, to this day, Terry Taylor will claim... That when they gave him, the day they gave him the Red Rooster gimmick, you know, the same day they give Mr. Perfect his gimmick and they pulled his name out of a box of gimmicks and just gave him the Red Rooster. Now, I admit the Red Rooster was a terrible gimmick and it was probably just, I don't know, it wasn't very flattering for Terry Taylor. But I don't believe that he was originally supposed to be Mr. Perfect. I believe that when they were talking to Mr. Perfect, they asked him, you know, what sports are you good at? And Because they were looking for kind of an athletic kind of heel. And Mr. Perfect said, well, I'm pretty much good in everything. So they started doing this video presentation where Mr. Perfect would be playing all these sports. And he would like do them like perfectly. And so, and Rogue Rooster was a, a different thing. They put him in Bobby Heenan. And then he kind of strayed away from Bobby Heenan. Broke out on his own. But he was, really wasn't resonating with the audience. Plus, the gimmick was kind of cheesy, and the audience didn't really like it, so he didn't last. So, so of course, Mr. Perfect won the match. So, And then we had a six-man tag. The model, Rick Martel and the Rougeos, versus the Rockers and Tito Santana. Now, Mar Rick Martel and Tito Santana had previously been a tag team called Strike Force. So... 
Strike Force. They were a pretty good team. They were former tag team champions, but then they broke up. So then they got back together right before WrestleMania 5, and at WrestleMania 5, they broke up again because Tito Santana accidentally hit Martel with his flying forearm, and Martel just kind of left him in the ring by himself to face the Brain Busters by himself. So I mean, at this point, they're kind of in a feud together. So naturally, Tito Santana being the good guy, tags up with the good guy team of the Rockers. Martel, being the bad guy and Canadian, tag teams up with his fellow Canadians and bad guys, the Rougeau brothers, the fabulous Rougeau brothers. So I believe the Rougeau brothers, yeah. Yep, yeah, Rougeau brothers and Martel won this match. The interesting, interesting thing in this match, though, is while it was going, um, Martel didn't want to hook up with Tito. He knew that Tito was angry, and he knew that he wanted revenge, so Martel would avoid wrestling Tito at all costs. Like, every time one of the Rockers would tag in Tito, if Martel was in there, he would immediately go over and tag in one of the Rougeos. Anyway, he spent the whole time running away from Tito. Anyway, <laughs> so, so then we had an Intercontinental Championship match. Now, at WrestleMania five, which was in 89... Uh, the Warrior went in as the champion, but due to some shenanigans from Bobby Heenan, Rick, Rick Rude, ravishing Rick Rude, I should say, won the IC belt. So, and that was because of Bobby Heenan. But in this one, Bobby Heenan was not a factor. The Warrior regained his Intercontinental Championship, and it made all the little Warriors happy. Because, and I have to admit, when I was a kid, I loved the Ultimate Warrior. You know, I loved the... The bright color face paint. I loved his persona. I loved the way he would like run to the ring and shake the ropes and you know his music. The whole presentation I just thought was cool. Anyway, so then we had the Demolition and Hacksaw Jim Duggan versus the Twin Towers and Andre the Giant, in which uh, Demolition and Duggan were victorious. And then we had Greg the Hammer Valentine versus Hercules. Valentine went over Hercules. Valentine won. And then Ted DiBiase versus Superfly Jimmy Snuka. The Million Dollar Man versus the Superfly. And of course, Ted DiBiase, the Million Dollar Man, won. Because at the time, I don't think they were really doing much with Snuka. I mean, Snuka was basically putting guys over at that time. You know, he, he really wasn't doing much. He really wasn't winning a whole lot of matches. So, I don't, I don't think he was really in too good a standing with Vince McMahon. So, I don't know. So then, we had the big main event. We had Hulk Hogan and Brutus the Barber Beefcake versus Macho Man and Zeus. Now, the Hulk Hogan-Macho feud was extending out to this point, but Macho Man had just turned heel. But Hogan and, and Zeus had just made the movie No Holds Barred together, where Zeus played Zeus. Hulk Hogan played Rip. And they were, the WWF at the time were saying, oh, on the set, you know, Zeus was hard to control. They, they, couldn't, they couldn't contain him. And he was just, he was difficult to work with and all that. And so they brought it into the actual storyline in which Hogan teamed up with his best friend, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, and they took on Zeus and Macho Man. At the time, Zeus, they were portraying him as like this, ah, ah, and he didn't feel any pain. Every time somebody would punch him, he'd just go, Ah! And he would just kind of cross-eyed, so he'd like portray like this psychopathic man that didn't feel any pain. But finally, eventually, Hogan and Beefcake were victorious, and they did win, thanks in part to Elizabeth, who was there in the corner of Hulk, Hogan and Brutus Beefcake, because Sensational Sherry was in the corner of Macho Man and Zeus. And Sensational Sherry's purse was used as the weapon that Hogan used to defeat Zeus. So, anyway, Hogan, Beefcake, Victorious, the, the good guys come out on top, and it was a good night for Hulk Hogan and for the Hulkamaniacs. I liked it. So that's going to do it for SummerSlam 1989. So, as usual, if you're new, feel free to go ahead and click the like button. 
feel free to subscribe. It helps me out too. And I will see you. Ooh, yeah. Sorry. Next time.